For the past decade, we knew Osama bin Laden was an indiscriminate mass murderer with fantasies of creating a twisted religious wonderland where all immorality would be violently purged by the holiest men in charge. What we didn't know was that he was also apparently a big fan of porn. His boogeyman image seems to shrink with each new discovery from that Pakistani compound, and Martha Raddatz has tonight's latest details. It was dark, chaotic, and a literal blur of gunfire when SEALs grabbed the treasure trove of intelligence inside the Abbottabad house, intelligence that reveals some stunning bin Laden pastimes. In fact, U.S. officials say they have learned more about terrorism in the last 10 days than they have in the last 10 years. One of the things they learned, which they were not expecting, a quote, huge stash of pornographic videos and magazines in a wooden box in bin Laden's bedroom. If it is true, it is really big because if he builds his reputation on austerity and piety and then is found to be uh, watching uh, uh, pornography, then of course even his followers will say, what is going on here? The U.S. did not want to officially release the information, concerned there would be suspicions it was planted. It was not, said the official, but there still could be doubts. I would be very doubtful about this for two reasons. Number one, the nature of the man, the nature of his austerity. Secondly, remember he's living with women, his wives, with children. I don't think a father would want to be seeing pornography with uh, children and wives around. Officials are still piecing together the narrative of the raid itself using video from helmet cameras worn by the Navy SEALs during the operation. All 25 members of the assault team recorded the raid, but the images are, of course, shaky and difficult to make out. But officials say the SEALs first encountered bin Laden as they were climbing the stairs to the third floor. It was the last area in the compound to be cleared. From one of the rooms emerges a tall, bearded man who quickly begins retreating. The seals fire, but bin Laden is not hit. Within seconds, the seals confront him again. But one official says as they do, a seal sees children near bin Laden, yelling and upset, and quickly moves them aside. That was always a priority of the mission, try to protect the children. Bin Laden's wife moves towards the SEALs. She is shot in the leg, and then one SEAL shoots him in the chest, then another bullet right through the head. Among the vast trove of material the SEALs retrieved from the compound, 10 computers, 100 thumb drives, and 10 cell phones. One million pages of data including bin Laden's handwritten journal, which was filled with hopes for major attacks, including his desire to assassinate President Obama and his hopes that a massive attack could derail the president's re-election. The president was more than a strategic target. Though he is a Christian, bin Laden saw him as a traitor to the Muslim religion. I would say this is probably very personal on bin Laden's part to kill a president that he believes has probably violated the Muslim faith, is not following bin Laden's uh, philosophies about what Muslims should be doing. And so he's incensed, inflamed, and I think also obsessed about killing a president because that would be like a mark above, I believe, 9-11. The Al-Qaeda leader even eventually tallied how many American lives it would cost to force a U.S. withdrawal from the Arab world. Not only was bin Laden a meticulous note taker, he was also apparently an avid emailer, despite having no internet connection. According to the Associated Press, he had an elaborate but laborious system in which a courier would send and receive messages by copying them onto a flash drive and sending them from different addresses. Then there is the question of U.S. access to Osama bin Laden's wives, who have been in Pakistani custody since the raid. But the government was finally granted access to three of the wives this week. The women were said to be hostile towards their interrogators. Today, the first revenge attack for bin Laden's death killed at least 80 recruits outside a military training center in Pakistan, which has received funding from the U.S. A spokesman for the Pakistani Taliban took credit, saying they will target any ally of the United States. 
U.S. officials continue to mine the cache of information gathered in the raid in hopes of identifying more al-Qaeda operatives, learning more about how the network functions and disrupting plans for future attacks. And as for the now famous SEAL Team 6, there is growing concern that the names of the SEALs will be revealed. The U.S. government believes there are publications offering money to find out who they are and is discussing plans on how to protect the SEALs if any publication occurs. Anything, they say, to ensure the SEALs and their families are safe. I'm Martha Raddatz for Nightline in Washington.